Welcome to the YouTube channel of Abrasive Imaging. Um, now we're talking about uh, the pen blaster and using the SR3000. So that's uh, a granite, um, a, a headstone uh, we engraved. Uh, the praying hands, a little bit more modern, so up to date. Um, here I'm cleaning the stone. So for cleaning, it's completely okay if you're using glass cleaner. So that's more than enough. and. Uh, a mic microfiber um, tissue or towel so just be sure that the surface is really really clean so and um, now I'm applying the SR3000 the um, ready-made mask so take a squeegee you want to be sure that the uh, material is uh, really in good contact with the stone. So you just need some light pressure. And you can see that all the air between the um, stone and the SR3000 is gone. So now I'm removing the PE layer. So that the plastic sheet we need to work with the squeegee to press the material, the soft film down to the stone and without the PE layer you would damage the, the photoresist. This photoresist is the SR3000 from Resist 3mm which is about 0.08mm which is um, yeah approximately 80 micron thick and we are going to work with 150 mesh um, aluminum oxide so brown corundum and here I'm using the wire wheel brush so I have a special type it's a little bit finer than the original one from Razist and uh, then you press it down again with a rubber roller to remove all the air bubbles so the wire wheel brush is, is also to, to, to destroy the membrane on top and to remove the air bubbles in the design. Now we have to cover the surface, so um, the stone, because later on I will also uh, work with some color and I don't want to mess up the stone. You really don't want to mess up the stone, even if it's uh, pre-engraved. <laughs> So I'm using here a self-stick um, paper. And a PVC tape. And the pen blaster I'm using later on. The 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 uh, the nozzle size is uh, three point two millimeter, and um, the abrasive, as I told before, is um, aluminum oxide, one hundred fifty mesh. Um, the pressure I'm using is yeah about four bar, which is about sixty psi. That's fully enough. And you want to be sure that everything is covered. You don't want to hit the surface and to, to, to polish it by hand again. That would be a mess. So that's it. Applying the SR3000 is a piece of a cake. So it's not, it's not witchcraft. So it's really easy to do. What I'm using here is uh, just a simple plastic canister. So I cut it down or cut it out uh, two holes. Uh, I applied uh, um, silicon foam on the downside not to, to, to scratch the SR3000 and uh, you can see when I sandblast line by line. So the distance is about let's say six, six to eight inches so which is about 15 to 25 centimeters that's fully enough. The pressure is 4 bar. And this little pan 
really does not need a lot of abrasive. So you see, um, I place on the stone a little canister too. There, um, there is a, a aluminum oxide uh, filled in. So, um, and for the for the complete engraving, I don't need more than let's say 100 gram of aluminum oxide. So it's not that much. And um, I'm using a vacuum cleaner with a HEPA filter and um, a dust bag inside. And that's it. So you see, it's nearly free of any dust. It's very clean without a cabinet. I've, I've seen the strangest stuff that people used an eBay or how afraid cabinet cut it off the backing, applied. Um, uh, also a uh, foam on the backside and are placing the stone or the glass on the backside of the cabinet and with such a simple canister and a, and a vacuumer you can you can work anywhere you can you can work on a door you can work on a on a, on a on a headstone or tombstone or whatever you can also take a canister um for engraving a a, a, a tableware like a drinking glass or whatever So if, if you are engraving hundreds of drinking glasses of wine glass or whatever you should for sure you should take a cabinet but if you just engrave one you can also take a canister the important is the, the sandblasting system itself it should be easy to use it shouldn't uh, use too much air so this little sandblasting pan uses 150 liters per minute if you are sandblasting with three bar which is about 45 psi, so it's not that much. And here I'm filling back the abrasive again, which, which was catched inside the canister, inside the plastic box. And just because of the video and just because I'm, I'm working on a customer premises, I'm just cleaning it up tightly. <laughs> So now the engraving is done. So that's it. So as I told you before, it's not witchcraft. Now you can have a look, a detailed look at daylight if the engraving is done. And yeah, that's it. Now we just have to clean up the stone. And then we have to cover the pre-engraved um, texture on the side and the star heaven and the clouds because um, you really don't want to mess up those areas with with uh, with a new color so you should protect the colored areas before you start um, color infilling the your design your sandblast it And the color I'm using is um, from, uh, the type is Durol. It's especially made for stone. It's an acrylic color. And I'm just taking a little bit of color and I'm wiping the engraving. Uh, with a, just just wiping it out with some color so it's not massively or a lot of color I'm using I just want to increase the um, the contrast a little bit and I would like to to um, to protect the engraving from 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 the rain so um, if, if you compare uh, sandblasting to a laser engraving so a laser engraved stone if, if uh, you have a, a rainy day, so you wouldn't see the engraving. The benefit with the sandblasting is you can color infill it easily. And uh, you will also see the etching and the engraving even if it rains. So that's uh, the biggest benefit of, of a sandblasting. And you can, you can, you can use um, the color several times. So if the color is gone with uh, after one and a half or two years, you can you can um, color the the image again, so that's not the a big deal. So I was using a razor blade to remove 
all the little parts of the film, the little dots, because it's a, it's a half tone. So it's a mixture. I, I made a, um, the artwork is a mixture of a, of a vector vector graphic and a half tone to to have more depth. I just like to play around with it. So I just take a little bit of the of the paint and a little tissue, and that's what I said, wiping out the the um, and coloring the the engraving. So you don't need much color. But the effect, the effect is pretty, pretty nice. You will see the, the details later on. And that's it. No drying time, nothing. So you can clean the stone right away and place it. You don't need to wait 24 hours or whatever, so that's ready. Most people during trade fairs, they, they ask me, are, are you serious? You're using a plastic box for sandblasting it? You see, it's worth doing it. So there is no dust, nothing. You just need a plastic box and a vacuumer. And for sure, the pan blaster. Another benefit of the pen blaster is you can also take it for your sandblasting, your existing sandblasting cabinet too. So you just need to, to put it inside the cabinet and then start working directly. So here we go. That's it. That's my engraving. So directly at customer premises, we placed it, engraved it, and that's it. That's a beautiful contrast, you see. Yeah, and if you have further questions concerning the pricing, the customer service we do, or the equipment we sell, you just need to, to go to our homepage, to abrasiveimaging.com, or write us an email, or give us a phone call. That's it. Thank you for watching.